A warm greeting. Today is Sunday, June 15, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. This past Wednesday, June 11, the University of Colorado released its new forecast for the Atlantic hurricane season, in which they continue to predict that the 2025 hurricane season should be more active than normal. However, as you may know, the Atlantic has been very quiet during the month of June, and we have not seen the formation of the first cyclone of the season, very different from what has happened in the Pacific, where four tropical cyclones have already formed, and a new low-pressure area has a high probability of becoming the next cyclone of the season. And while this may seem to indicate that the Atlantic hurricane season will be slow, the reality is that if we look at history, typically during the months of June and July, cyclone activity in the Atlantic is very low. And it's not until August when cyclone activity generally begins to increase significantly in the Atlantic. And this behavior is very different from the Pacific region, where from the month of June we already see cyclone activity, and although it does increase during the months of August, September, and October, the distribution of cyclone formation does not have such a defined season peak as in the Atlantic hurricane season. In fact, as we mentioned a few weeks ago, we are currently in a favorable phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation, which promotes instability across the Caribbean Sea and the Pacific. However, in this case, it is the Pacific that has seen all the cyclone activity, and for now, it does not suggest development in the Atlantic unless the future tropical storm Eric manages to move into the southern waters of the Gulf of Mexico. However, this scenario is very unlikely, and if we look at the forecast for the movement of the Madden-Julian Oscillation, it won't be until the beginning of July that we may again see an opportunity for the first Atlantic cyclone to form. However, it appears that the next phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation will be quite weak, and it may not be until late July or early August when we truly see greater chances of development in the Atlantic. So, why is the University of Colorado forecasting an active season? That's why I recorded this video, to talk in detail about the indicators that still suggest the hurricane season should be more active than normal. As usual, let's look at the sea surface temperature anomalies across the Pacific and Atlantic. First, notice that in the Nino 3.4 region of the Pacific, we continue with neutral conditions. In fact, models project that neutral conditions should persist during the rest of the hurricane season. As you know, neutral ENSO conditions decrease wind shear across the Caribbean Sea, the Gulf of Mexico, and the southwestern Atlantic, which typically results in more favorable conditions for the formation and strengthening of tropical cyclones. Also, on the other hand, in yellow and orange colors, you can see that the areas of the tropical Atlantic, Caribbean Sea, Gulf of Mexico, and subtropical Atlantic are showing warmer than normal sea surface temperatures. And although fortunately, they are not as warm as last year, model projections suggest that for the peak of the season, we will have slightly warmer temperatures than normal. And just like with neutral ENSO conditions, this could create more favorable conditions for an active season. Now, remember that these are projections, and much can change in the coming weeks. For example, there are two things we are closely monitoring. First, the waters near the Canary Current are warmer than normal. And in some cases, we have seen that these waters move down into the tropical Atlantic region and tend to warm the main cyclone development zone. However, we really cannot say for certain whether these waters will move into the tropical Atlantic, and we simply have to wait to see how they evolve over the next few months. We'll also be keeping an eye on the Gulf of Guinea region, where we have seen unusual cooling of the waters, which, if it continues, it could suppress cyclone activity between the Caribbean and Africa. So, here we have two areas that we'll be monitoring closely because both have very different influences on cyclone activity. While the warm waters near the Canary Islands would favor more cyclone activity, the potential development of the Atlantic Nino, on the other hand, could reduce cyclone activity. So, unlike last year, this year we have a mix of indicators, and although we continue projecting that the hurricane season should be more active than normal, there is still uncertainty. Let's now talk about the forecast from the University of Colorado. First, they shared this image comparing how the temperature anomalies look in June and how this can correlate with cyclone activity in the Atlantic. On the right-hand side, you can see that typically when the waters to the west of Portugal and near the Canary Current are warmer than normal, this can be an indicator of more cyclone activity, and that is precisely what we have at this time in that area. The other correlation is that when the tropical Atlantic or the main cyclone development zone has warm temperatures in the month of June, it tends to be an indicator of a more active hurricane season, just like we saw last year. However, this year the temperatures across that zone are near or only slightly warmer than normal. Also, note that this year we have very warm temperatures in the subtropical Atlantic. And although in June there is no correlation between these anomalies and cyclone activity, the University of Colorado comments that in general, the warmer distribution of temperature anomalies should result in at least a slightly more active hurricane season. 
That's why the University of Colorado is forecasting that this year 17 tropical storms will form, when the normal is 14. Of these, 9 should reach hurricane strength, when the normal is 7. And of these, 4 could be major hurricanes, when the normal is 3. Additionally, note that they continue to forecast 165 accumulated cyclone energy units, compared to the normal of 135. In fact, this forecast from the University of Colorado published this past Wednesday, is identical to the forecast they released in April. Before continuing, I wanted to mention that the University of Colorado says many people ask whether these forecasts are really valid, and the reality is that since 1980, when we look in red at what the seasonal forecasts have been and in blue at what has actually occurred, we can generally see that there is a degree of certainty. Therefore, it's understood that it's worthwhile to try to forecast how active or inactive the hurricane season might be. However, on some occasions, these forecasts can be wrong, as we saw in 2005, 2003, 2004, and as recently as 2022. The important thing is that regardless of how active the season may or may not be, we should all be prepared, because a single hurricane can affect the area where you live. Let's now talk about the different indicators for forecasting an active season. The first analysis the University of Colorado makes is how the winds behave across the equatorial Pacific during the month of May and how temperatures near the Canary Current are during the month of May. When they analyze these predictors, they find that the waters are warm near the Canary Islands and that the wind across the equatorial Pacific is stronger than normal this year, which should maintain neutral ENSO conditions. When combining these two predictors, you can see that in general the model results indicate that the warm waters near the Canary Islands should result in more cyclone activity while the stronger winds across the equatorial Pacific, in this case, should not be an obstacle for cyclone activity. On the other hand, the University of Colorado also uses projections from some models that analyze how the temperatures are expected to be during the peak of the season in the region where El Nino and La Nina develop, as well as across the tropical Atlantic and the central and northern Atlantic. When analyzing the anomalies across these zones, and historically, We've seen that the results of these model runs have also shown good accuracy in forecasting how active the hurricane season could be. So, the results of the projections for the peak of the season indicate that all the models project that the hurricane season should be more active than normal, with the formation of over 18 tropical storms, over 9 hurricanes, and between 4 to 5 major hurricanes. It also results in a lot of accumulated cyclone activity, values that are typically associated with a hyperactive season. Despite these results, the University of Colorado has gone a bit conservative with 17 storms, 9 hurricanes, 4 major hurricanes, and 155 accumulated cyclone energy units. And finally, the other reason for forecasting an active season is the analog years, in this case, based on seasons where two years earlier we had an El Nino phenomenon. It turns out that the most similar or analogous years are 1996, 1999, 2008, 2011, and 2021. When we analyze the cyclone activity that occurred during those years, on average we get 16 tropical storms, 8 hurricanes, 5 major hurricanes, and 152 accumulated cyclone energy units. These values are quite close to the forecast from the University of Colorado. So, in the end, when we combine all these parameters, we get an average of 19 tropical storms, 10 hurricanes, and 5 major hurricanes with 178 accumulated cyclone energy units. However, based on their experience, the University of Colorado decided to slightly reduce the projection for tropical storms, hurricanes, major hurricanes, and accumulated cyclone energy, resulting in a somewhat conservative forecast. But definitely, at this moment, there is no reason to think that the hurricane season should be less active than normal, because the indicators continue to show good chances that the hurricane season will be more active than normal. But as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, a lot can change in the coming weeks and months, and we just have to prepare and stay alert for any cyclone that forms this year. And you know that here at, I'll be keeping a close eye to keep you informed. And before I go, I'd like to ask you to give this video a like, and also, so you don't miss any videos during the season, subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you get notifications when I post new videos. With that, I say goodbye for now. Tomorrow morning, I'll record an update on Invest 94E and what threat it represents for areas of Oaxaca and Guerrero in Mexico. I hope everyone has an excellent Sunday. See you tomorrow.